And then I, it brings me to a question that, do, do you know there, there are like five elements of critical thinking? Do you know what they are? Five elements of critical thinking? I mean, yeah. it's gotta be, gotta be listening, right? You gotta, you gotta listen. No? No, that's not one, unfortunately. Okay, I, I was looking up and I came across this website that is from the University of T Tennessee at Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I said it correctly. Hopefully I did. And they have this article that's called The Basic Elements of Critical Thinking. And there's a portion where they talk about five elements of critical thinking. And it's be, being able to ask questions, gather relevant information, think through solutions and conclusions, consider alternatives, systems of thought, and communicate effectively. And I agree with that. And I would say that personally, I see that a lot of people don't have this. They might have maybe a couple elements, but not all five. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. Uh, a lot of people don't think about those things when they're just, you know, listening to somebody speak or they're watching something, a documentary or a real right. They're not actively trying to analyze and dissect it. So that's very, very important, you know, that they've learned that skill, right? Because like we said, it's developed over time um, and people need to start like not taking everything at face value and going deeper into it a little bit more and researching it also a little bit. Yeah, but I think that for people to be able to have a, be able to be critical and think critically, they have to be also open-minded, you know, they have to be able to be open to all sorts of information to be able to take a better and more analytical decision and make a better and analytical judgment. So I think being open-minded is a, a really important like aspect to be able to develop a critical thinking mindset. Yeah, but being open-minded doesn't necessarily mean that you agree with everybody. It just means that you're, like you said, you're, you're taking in all yeah. the possible and then you're deciding, look, this is the one that's most supported. This has more um, uh, data supporting it. You know, this is more realistic. This actually works. This one doesn't, you know, and analyzing that, you know, at a certain point. And out of those five, we were talked about, you talked about the five levels, right? Yeah. Which do you think out of those five, do you think Gen Z youth lack the most today? The most? Which one do I personally think that Gen Z lacks the most? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm torn between two. Can I say just two? Can I say two instead? I would say that gathering relevant information. Okay. Beca because you just take things at face value and mm -hmm. they do not take more time to s do more research to see if it's true or not. And if it is, why? What's hap actually happening? behind the scenes. And yeah. I would say we're not great communicators as well. <laughs> Through the phone we are, but personally, person to person, I don't think Gen Z, I think Gen Z lacks a lot of communicative skills. Mm -hmm. And I would say thinking through solutions and conclusions. Okay. I, I say those three are the biggest ones that we lack. I would, I definitely think thinking through solutions and conclusions is a very big one. And yes, not finding relevant information. So let's go over those two. I think let's talk about those little two. So the first one we can talk about is um, not looking at enough information. That's a tough one because like we we're just saying, we don't know a lot of times what information is true and false. And a lot of times when you search up th things on like Google and things on YouTube, whatever pops up first, isn't necessarily what's the most informative or what's the best, you know, information or the most truest information. It's whatever's popular, whatever is, you know, um, suggested by the algorithm, right? And so sometimes you have to look a little bit farther down, you have to investigate a little bit more, do your research a little bit more. Do you think that too? Yeah, for sure. For me, for example, when I'm doing research or I see something online, I'm like, oh, wow, is this actually happening? Is this actually true? And go to see some research. And I see some websites that say it's true, some that are false. You know, so for me, I rely more on the websites that go more hand in hand with each other within the information, because then you know 
it's not creating or speculating other things. But then you also have the, you know, more trustworthy websites that have a better reputation as well. So yeah, a person has got to be able to know which sources are most reliable. And I would say be able to read everything and analyze the data, analyze the information and see if it goes hand in hand with other sources, if it contradicts why, you know, because you have certain times where a website has this information about something and then another has another point of view that completely contradicts it. And I think it's important to keep an open mind as well, not just like one is wrong and one is right. No, be able to analyze it and see what's the truth and see for yourself, you know, what about you? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, but I also think another aspect of that is the fact that we have to look for things outside of our own worldview, right? We can't yeah. just things like gaining information um, on topics that we agree with or on point of views that we agree with. Like, oh, because I support this point of view, let me research on why my argument is right. Why don't yeah. you search why your argument could be wrong and get some opposing views? Or like, if you know somebody has an opposite view, instead of shutting them down and be like, look, I don't want to discuss with you. I don't want to talk with you because you're wrong and I'm right. Look, let's engage in this discussion. You know, yeah. sure, have to convince each other, but I want to hear you out. I want to know what you have to say. And that is also an important part. Sure, it's like you said, it's also a little bit part of communication and it requires communication skills in that particular aspect, but also just, right, like you said, having an open mind to try and see what what else you know can we learn what else is out there what other information can i take into consideration when i'm making my decisions and making my choices i fully agree with that um but i would say that a lot of people don't have that nowadays you know um more towards the fact that just we, we are lazier in a, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And I would think that affects a lot people when it comes to doing research and just looking up things because, you know, sometimes people just want to look, look up things that they agree with. And I'll look at the, the next, the opposite side and consider things from an opposite perspective or different perspective. Mm -hmm. So, and to be honest, people would rather be watching Netflix or watching YouTube or whatever than to be researching and seeking the truth and mm -hmm. doing other things. Yeah. We also mentioned, go on, you were going to say something? I was, yeah, I was going to carry it into the next point and say that's kind of also what the other point was about looking at other solutions and conclusions because yeah. people have a natural tendency, you know, and they're not to blame, it's just our human nature, right? Our natural tendency is once we believe something, that's right. You know, that's that's yeah. that's the end of it. That's the only possible solution. And people don't like to look to other solutions. Like, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this isn't the best way to take care of the situation. Um, you know, it could go for anything. Maybe, you know, what I believe in isn't necessarily right. Or, you know, maybe I have the wrong answers and somebody else might have the right answers. You know, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I completely understand what you're saying and i would say we as a generation especially generation z i think speaking in a general sense uh, we lack the skills to think through solutions and conclusions we are more of asking questions you know to have other people solve our problems than to do it ourselves you know i personally when i was a kid i used to ask questions so i would know what the answer was but now I ask questions and then I go finding the solutions and the conclusions for them, you know? So I think it's a really important for a person to be able to do things and to seek solutions and conclusions by themselves, because at some point you won't be able to rely on people, you know, because some po at some point you don't agree with, for example, maybe you have a certain point of view towards something and I have another, you know, and I'm not going to take your word at face value because I want to look more towards, I want to do some research from your point of view, wh why and st things like that, you know? So I think that we sh like definitely like our generation should encourage themselves to develop these 
and just become better at these skills and at these traits as well, you know? Yeah, I think our generation is a little bit caught up in the idea of like tribalism, like everybody kind of follows the same idea, like, oh, all these believe in this, that, you know what I mean? Let's just, oh, my friends all believe it's true, so like, it's true, you know what I mean? Like, that's what's good, that's what's fun, that's what's cool, you know? So let's just go into that. And there's no consideration for like, you know, even if this is a majority, maybe the non-majority could be right. You know, what if there's other solutions, you know, outside of what just the popular belief is, you know? And I think that's very important. And people need to ask more to questions like why, you know? Like, yeah. why am I right and they're wrong? Why are they right and I'm wrong? Or, you know, why are they saying this? You know, and that's very, very important. 